Thank you for your mercies, your goodness, your grace. And I thank you, Lord God, as we come together to fellowship in the word by the spirit of God and by his grace. Lord, we cast every care upon you, every dysfunction upon you, look towards you. And we thank you, Lord, that what started off as a disaster will end up as usually like it does uh, being a benefit. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you. I ask that our ears are open, their eyes are open to see the things that we need to see, the things we need to hear. And so we call upon the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, the comforter, the one that comes alongside us to help us. Yes. Yes. And Lord, just give us a, a, a sense of destiny, a sense of purpose, a sense of overcoming in these days, and give us some reality, we pray, yes. through this message. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, glory to God. Let me just kind of regain my composure in the Lord because I've been under attack this week as well, um, personally, you know, with fear and anxiety. And I just really do believe that this is the season for God's protection and His peace. And, uh, and it's something that is uh, it, it's a battle. It's a battle to enter the, into the rest of God. And I wanted to speak to you this morning about, um, well, remind you last Sunday that I spoke just for a few minutes on the peace of God. And, uh, and I really felt that it was a message from God's heart, and He really wanted us to enter into that rest and that peace. And, um, and on that night, Sunday night, I was really challenged um, with anxiety in the night. Um, I had such an attack, at, at night terrors. And, um, and I was worried for my friend who had to be kicked out of her her house um, within weeks, um, and uh, and people that I know that I love that are sick, and um, the the desperate things that people that are close to me are going through, and um, I had just such anxiety that night and fear um, that I was up all night, and you know I, I spent time praying and I casting down imaginations, and I had Horlicks and herbal sleep tea and a banana and I did everything I knew to enter into that rest but it eluded me and I you know I just fought and battled all night and um, and this is real you know I know that if it happens to me it happens to those of you out there as well and um, and, and none of us are exempt from the attacks um, of, of the devil none of us are exempt so I wanted to um, speak to you to let you know what God had done through that um, experience, what He had done for me and what He had said to me through that. The next um, morning I woke up and I saw uh, a headline and it said, um, it said, shelter in place. And I didn't see shelter in place. I, d I didn't read that. That didn't compute in my mind. The words that I saw when I looked at that was shelter in the secret place. And I felt that God took that headline and he twisted the understanding of it so that yeah. he could give me a message as to what he wanted to say to me, which was to draw close to him and he will defend me and he will protect me and he will comfort me. And so momentarily, you know, I had let that slip and I allowed those thoughts and that anxiety to weigh down very heavily on me. And the tactics of the evil one these days are, are much more increased, I think, than they ever have been before. So I then went to Psalm uh, 91, of course, which is the Psalm of Protection. And, um, and God showed me some things in there that I hadn't seen before, and I wanted to share that with you. Because as I said, if I know I'm going through this, I know that you're having these episodes as well. And I want to give you every bit of um, armor to, to make your way through this in this time. And I'm going to read some of the um, uh, Psalm 91 for you this morning in particular, and it'll help strengthen you, and I believe it'll help build your faith. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, 
My God, on him I lean on and rely, I confidently trust. For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Then he will cover you with his pinions and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow, the evil plots and slanders of the wicked that fly by day. I'm going to move down to verse 9, and it says, Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your dwelling place, there shall no evil befall you, neither any plague shall come nigh your dwelling. And then, jump, jumping down to verse 14, again it says, Because, again, he has set his love upon me, this is the Lord talking, therefore I will deliver him, and I will set him on high, because he knows and understands my name, has a personal knowledge of my mercy, love, and kindness, and trusts and relies on me. So I found it really interesting because there were areas there that God um, took me to that I had never known the understanding nor inquired of him. And one of those was the deadly pestilence he talks about. Well, I didn't know what deadly pestilence is, do you? I thought it was a, a group of bugs or you know, flies or uh, locusts or something like that. Deadly pestilence is a dangerous, fatal, highly contagious, virulent, if infectious, devastating, epidemic disease. This is what a deadly pestilence or a perilous pestilence is. It's a disease. It's a virulent, highly contagious, devastating disease. And how timely is this? How timely that God should reveal this to me? Um, because much of my fear and anxiety is based on the fact that we're going through this season of time. My friends are going through sickness and illness. We're afraid now to go out, even though they're releasing us to some extent. We're afraid for our children to go to school because of this deadly pestilence. And God is saying here that he's defending us against this. We are being covered, and he's protecting us from this. So those basically who shelter in the secret place of the Most High will find refuge and safety in these days. And I think it it's behooves us to remember and, 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 and to be mindful of, uh, of these things and to not let them go and constantly refresh our minds with the fact that we need to meditate on the promises that he's left us. We need to read Psalm 91 over and over again. I know that Years ago, I had a little scripture card, and it had the whole Psalm 91 on it, and I would carry it around with me. In fact, you know, I said to Michael the other day, do you remember when I was so severely attacked years ago? And I've had attacks all my life, but and they've always been very deep. Um, but there was one time when God showed me to carry this card around, and I actually carried it around with me and I slept with it. I kept referring to it just to calm me. It was the only thing that would calm me and give me uh, a, a sense of safety. Um, and, and so I would draw into the Lord and draw close to Him. And I would say to strive to enter into the rest be, by way of persistence. You have to be persistent with this. You have to be persistent. You have to lean in on the promise of God. You have to grab hold of it and draw it close. And you have to lean in as though it was the you were saving your life because you actually are. Um, your life depends on it. Your life depends on the Word of God in these times. It's not going to get any easier. Um, it, it will get darker and darker and darker, but the church will get brighter and brighter and brighter. And God's revelation will hit you and you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is His Word to you to help you get through these times. So you have to cast down the imaginations, the unbelief, the fear, the, the, um, the news, the fear that the news is bringing. You have to cast it down and in place bring in the promises of God to calm your heart. Your call to arms in these days is to hide. Basically that's the bottom line. He, he says he is his, our, our hiding place and he hides us from trouble. And we hide in Him. We allow Him to shelter us in these days. So my prayer for you in these days now, and today, and tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, is that you will enter into that secret place of the Most High. You will shelter there. You will dwell there. And He will cover you. 
and he will secure you and defend you and protect you and comfort you and cause the Holy Spirit to cause you to remember those things that he has spoken to you. Remember the times he has delivered you before and lead you through and guide you um, with his love and his care because he is there, he loves us, he's not going to forsake us, he's faithful to us. And just remember that because um, our life does depend on it basically. We've exchanged our life with his and, uh, and we have a new life and we can trust in him because he is faithful and he is reliable. So God bless you all and, um, and I love you. You're really dear to me and, um, and so I, I just trust God with your lives this week that uh, you will have testimony to his, his nurture in, and care in your life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Denise. Appreciate that word. You're Thank welcome. you so much. Do you have something to add to that? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> All righty. Okay, uh, I'm going to move off to the side, and I will still be with you. Well, we've been doing this sort of double act for 45 years, so I think I'm pretty versed as to what's going on as far as uh, we are concerned. But today, like I say, was a bit of an uh, uh, awesome uh, mess up. But we do have 17 people on board, so that's good. Um, and I've learned a lesson. I've learned not to do this, so next time we shouldn't have this problem. I suppose it's a learning curve for all of us, isn't it, in life? Uh, one thing, though, I, I, I do know that we, we have to learn the mind of Christ. Isn't that so? I mean, you know, Paul said, you've learned everything else, but you haven't learned the mind of Christ. So we can learn how to do Zoom. But we haven't got the mind of Christ, even what we say over Zoom or how we use the tech, the devices that God's given us to communicate the way we do, wouldn't be much good either because we don't have the mind of Christ. I, I realized in my own mind that the spirit of the consciousness of Christ is the answer to all things. It's, you've got to have that constant mindset uh, that Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's, it's Christ living his life through you. He, he wants to do things through you. you just got to present your body, that living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. So that's our part to play, and God will work through us. So without that mind, it's very difficult, I think, to come to any uh, successful conclusion of your short time on this earth. But once we have the, uh, we're seeing it the way God sees it, which is uh, only by grace that he gives us that ability to see things and to understand things. You know, we're looking at things sometimes that we're not really seeing. We're, we've got our ears open, we're not really hearing. You know, that judgment did come upon uh, Israel of old. You know, uh, they, they, they had a judgment, they under judgment, they, they, their eyes were closed, they couldn't see. So they could never see Christ, their Messiah, they would only see Israel as their Messiah, basically. Uh, but it's uh, it's coming about now where that judgment is, is over. There's no more judgment upon Israel. And, uh, you know, they were judged by God, as you know, they went to uh, Syrian captivity, Babylonian captivity. And um, the Babylonians didn't want to let them go at all. You know, they refused to let them go. It says that in Jeremiah 50:33. You know, Babylon doesn't want to let you go. That's why the Bible says, come out from amongst them. Come out amongst so the Babylonians. Come away from that mindset. Uh, because that is coming down. And you don't want to be part of the Babylonian Empire anymore. It's still alive, but it's, it's on its last breath. It's gasping. The things that we're seeing today, even this virus is all really our fault because we are departing from Babylon. We're leaving. Many of us are going into the courts of heaven and declaring our freedom and our liberty. This is time for the dominion to come upon us, the, the believers, the overcomers. And there's a fight back. There's a fight back. They, they are fighting civil war, you know, is going on throughout the world. It's Babylon fighting to keep us in bondage. They don't want us to leave. But God did send a man, whether you like it or not, the hatchet man, God's hammer, 
who's breaking it all up. His name is Donald Trump. I know right now people are leaving. There goes one, two, three, four. <laughs> but the fact is, God chooses the strange people, like he chose you and me, we're pretty strange, to preach the gospel. Well, he, 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 Trump has got a hammer in his hand. He's just smashing everything. Smashing everything. It, but the Bible says in the last days, everything's going to be smashed. Everything's going to be shaken. It's all coming down. And so because it's coming down, we're in this transition and it's uh, there's a lot of shaking going on. You know, there's lots of untoward things coming our way. But we do have the uh, ability to see through those storms of life, to know that we've actually won the battle. We're still in a fight, but we've won because God says we've won and there will be peace on earth. There will be a good result here in the end. So it's all transitional. The judgment was seven times seven. It was like Nebuchadnezzar, you know, seven years eating grass. And then at the end of it all, he came back to his mind. And next minute, he sounds like Paul the Apostle preaching the one God, one God of all, how great and mighty he is. He took himself away from being a king of kings to a king under a king. And that's what's happening now. The nations are being shaken up. Um, the, uh, the, there are a few already that are bowing the knee to the, to the King, Lord Jesus Christ, who's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and their nation will be blessed. But there's others that are fighting that. So we're obviously uh, in prayer. We're going into the courts of heaven. We're pleading our case. We are binding the forces of the, uh, of the principalities of this world. And Babylon is going to suffer total defeat. And we will be totally released into this new world where we shall live in peace and prosperity. This is what's taking place. So this type of thing that we're in now, this, in this lockdown, will not be forever. God will stop this as well. Uh, we will come out of this. Uh, but a lot of people will die. A lot of people are fearful. A lot of people are in distress. We, we know that. But that's what war is all about, isn't it? Whenever there's war, the first thing that turns up is confusion. You know, fake news, confusion. People don't know which way to turn. But if you've got eyes to see, if you're not looking at the things through your natural horizontal lines, but you're seeing it vertically, you're, you're, you're going to the heavenlies and you're understanding that this is a war but it's come to an end. The judgment was seven times 360, which was 2,520 years. It's come to an end. Remember the beast system, the image that Nebuchadnezzar had, the four empires? Well, we're at the last one now, and the stone kingdom has come about. It's hit the ten toes. The whole thing is crumbling. Babylon is falling. Uh, so come out of Babylon. So we have to have this mind, which is the mind of Christ which is not a Babylonian mind. If you still have the old Babylonian thinking, you'll still be in bondage, you'll still be in fear, you still won't know what's going on. Uh, but we, we want to, 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 to say and declare that, that we've won. It's, it's happening. Babylon is falling. Right now, the financial kingdoms are falling. Uh, there'll be a new currency. It's all going to be, in, we're in a new world. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I remember 27 years ago, that's what I heard. God said, I'm releasing you to the new world. We're in it. Praise God. <laughs> Without judgment. The judgment has come to an end. And this, this is wonderful for the, for the Jewish people because their eyes are going to be open. Truly, they're going to begin to see. And they're going to come and receive the Messiah, not, not uh, being concerned about building a, a, another temple. We don't want a temple built out of bricks with the temples being out of lively stones, which we are part of. This is the temple of the Lord, and he wants to live in you and me. Uh, and we're here to praise him. We're here to glorify him. And we're here to live a life of rest in Christ. And if there's anything to fear in these days, it's to fear the one thing I read in my Bible. Fear, lest the promise being left you of entering into his rest, you fall short of it. 
well, this rest is here now. We can enter into that rest. And uh, we know that God is, is fighting these battles. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ in the heavenlies is, is waging war. There's war, big war, big time war. But we're winning. We're winning the battle. So this is just another symptom of Babylonian kickback against the fact that they've lost the lease to the domination of the world. It's come to an end. Everything sooner or later comes to an end. They don't have the lease anymore of power, of dominion. It's been given to the overcomers. Now, all these things you can read about in the book of Daniel, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Here's a, here's a scripture here in Jeremiah uh, 34. It says, Their Redeemer is strong, Yahweh of hosts, or heaven's army, is his name. He will vigorously plead their case so that he, he may bring rest to the earth. That's a promise. Rest. But turmoil to the inhabitants of Babylon. So if you're in Babylon, you've got turmoil. If you're, if you're, if you're in Christ, in the rest, you've got a promise of peace. And, and these things will not come nigh thy dwelling. And of course, we've got the blood of Jesus. I'm sure every one of you who knows Jesus have put the blood on the, on the, on the doorways of their heart so the plague, plague won't settle in your household. But anyway, we're the ones that rest. The Babylonians are in turmoil. And unfortunately, there are many Christians, people I know, who are still in turmoil because they've still got a Babylonian mindset. You've got to see it through eyes of faith. You've got, to, you've got to ask God to open your eye. Don't look at Donald Trump as uh, uh, the enemy. He's just the hammer. Don't look at his haircut and say, I can't get involved in that man. I don't like the way he speaks. I don't like... Listen, this is not, <laughs> this is not about uh, some nice person running the world for God. The only person going to run the world for God is Jesus Christ, and he's going to run it through you and me, the overcomers, those who have ceased from their own works, and they are focusing on this Christ mind in them, and knowing that, that knowing this, that it's our time now. It's our time. It's our time to have the dominion. The overcomers' time has been given to us by God. This um, beast system actually came to an end after 2,520 years, and it ended apparently, I, I read it, in October 2017. Well, that's the time when the, you know, the Trump dispensation came into being. And the war is on, folks. It's a big war. Oh, it's a kick-ass war. I've got to tell you, excuse my language, but <laughs> it's tough. It's rough out there. But we're winning. We're winning. We're coming through. And we have to live a life of rest at this end of this age. It's not the end of the world. Someone asked, told me, uh, is this the end of the world? I said, no, it's not the end of the world. It's world without end. But it's the end of an age. So this is a new age, a new world that we're in. Get used to it. You're the top, not the bottom. You're the ones, you're the winners. Uh, the Babylonians are frantic. They don't know what to do. They're losing the plot. It's being taken from them. And the wealth is being taken from them. The money is being taken from them. The politics of, of, of the past, it's over. It's no longer there. But it, if you look at it through your horizontal eye, you see all the faults and all the, all the stuff that's going on. And everyone, you know, well, everyone blames Trump for everything. But the fact is, we're to blame because we're kicking back. We want to be free. We want to be free from Babylonian rule. And God is hearing our plea, our cry. And the judgments now are taken off of the Israel of God and also natural Israel and Judah. They all, we're all going to experience heaven on earth. This was what promised to Abraham. Heaven on earth. This earth is not going anywhere. It's going to be made over to be even better than it is or was. So forget about coronavirus. Whenever I hear the word coronavirus, I think of Jesus Christ. That's what comes to my mind. Jesus Christ. Coronavirus, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ to me, the hope of glory. And uh, that's, that's our take. 
That's our take as believers. We're overcomers. We've entered into a rest. The battle's not ours, it's the Lord's. He's doing this. Anyway, I said about um, uh, the kingdom of God, you know, is upon us, is in us, it's growing, it's taking over. The Babylonians are falling away, they're, they're running away, they're, they're, they are howling in, in distress, but not us. So anyway, heaven is returning to earth. Okay, we've been given the thrones that are spoken of in Daniel 7, 9. These are thrones that have been given. These are power, power being given to us. But in transition, it's all shaky and wobbly. doesn't look like nothing's really going to come out of this mess positive. It'll be very positive. It's going to be really good. Here's a scripture here. I've got to read this one. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancients of days did sit. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. Oh, I mean, this goes on, and this is awesome stuff. Uh, and this is Daniel. He said he was grieved in his spirit. Uh, the visions of his head troubled him. Uh, but uh, then, then I would know the truth, verse 19, of the fourth beast. The fourth beast is the, the Roman Empire. You know, the one with the ten toes. And then there was, uh, 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 was diverse from all others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth was of iron, and his nails of brass, which devoured, breaking pieces, and stampled the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns there were, were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things as a person whose look was more stout than his fellows, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them, until the ancients of days came. And judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Did you hear that? The time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. This is now. This is, this is a now, now hour. It's our time. Okay, so God is in control of this. He's taking it away, using people to break and smash the systems of this world. The political systems, the religious systems, they're all coming down. Financial systems, every system. There will not be a stone left. They're all coming down. All these temples of false gods, all these tribal gods, they're all going to get smashed. And we're entering into a thousand years of peace and prosperity. Ruling, ruling with him and him through us. God doesn't need a vicar, a vicar of Christ on earth to represent him. The Holy Spirit is on the earth. He is the vicar of Christ. And he is bringing about the understanding and the revelation of the king of kings. The soon coming king. Get ready. He's about to come back. I mean, we are, we are so excited within us as Christians that this is so imminent and so that's why we got this urge to tell people and to share uh, the good news of the gospel even in the coronavirus the good news is still there uh, and so um, all my minister friends up there I'm sure that you're uh, sensing uh, something exciting regarding Israel regarding evangelism regarding revival it's all, it's all, it's all there. It's all here for us now. There's no more waiting. The waiting's over. Uh, and the judgments have been given by the courts of heaven. Babylon has been found wanting. And every one of those kingdoms have been judged. And now the sentence is being passed. You know, when the judge uh, declares you guilty, he hasn't, he hasn't yet sentenced you. In other words, uh, you could come back a week later and you get the sentence. Well, the sentence now is being passed by God. Okay. And nothing's going to stand that is not built of his spirit. Nothing's going to stand. Anything built of the carnal mind, the Babylonian mind, it's all going to fall to, it's all going to fall to the ground. And the things that are established in Christ will remain. 
So my, my take on all this is whatever you do, whatever I do in life, and remember, it's not about doing, it's about being in Christ and, and, and being in the family of God. But, but there's doing, because we've got hands and feet and we've got a mind and we, and we, we want to do things. But I found for me that unless God inspires me, unless this is an inspirational moment, I don't want to do anything. But when I get the inspirational moment, I know I can move on that. But then I also found that even though I'm moving on that, there's a huge weight. It's, you know, have you, you get your prophecy on Monday and you think you're going to get it fulfilled on Friday. Then you, five years later, you find out it still hasn't happened, but you've got to, you've got to stand firm, you know, uh, endure till the end. And that's what we're doing. So I know that I received the new world release, but that was 27 years ago. But now <laughs> I feel I can move. Even on that revelation all those years back, I can move now. I feel uh, comfortable in, in starting Victory Church on Zoom. Who knows where it's going to go from there? But I wouldn't do it until I knew the timing was right. So what we have here is the timing and the inspiration. You've got to be inspired with, with an idea, inspired, you've got it through a dream, a revelation, God speaks to you, small, still voice, and then the timing of it. So important. And if you move in the wrong timing, even though it's inspired what you received, won't work anyway. So that's why we've got to be still, know that He is God. Those who wait upon the Lord rise up with wings of eagles. And the good news is too, if you wait on God, He said He'll strengthen your heart. Now some of you might have heart problems, I've had heart problems. Uh, but I keep that in mind. He's strengthening my heart as I wait. So I'm not going around trying to be busy, trying to get everyone stirred up to save the world. You know, no. God, God's going to do it through whoever He decides to use to reach people. But you know who's going to start reaching the people? Is the Jewish people. You know, if if their fall became our blessing, well, their uh, returning to the tree is going to be the glory of the whole world. So get ready to see a real Jewish army coming about, preaching the gospel, preaching Jesus, the Messiah. Not, not one to come. They'll recognize as he came. They didn't receive him. The judgment is past. It's over. You know, every, with every action, there's an opposite, equal reaction. And with every action, God says, be careful, because every work will be judged. Every work will be judged. Uh, so be careful, fearful. Fear, fear, fear the Lord. Oh, I love the fear of the Lord. There's one of the things I asked for a long time ago was the, the spirit of the fear of the Lord because I knew the fear of the Lord was the beginning of wisdom. So if you're going to fear, don't fear coronavirus. If you're going to fear, fear God. Fear the fact that you might be moving out in the wrong time. You've got to wait from God. So this is my thought today. You get an inspired word, a dream, a revelation, a prophecy, whatever it is. You know it's inspired. That's the moment you just know. But as we learn, you don't move out quickly and necessarily, boom, you put little steps along the way, but then you'll find that maybe, yes, we can continue to move and then God's doing things here and things are being added. Or you sense that, no, there's still a hedge around you, but you've got that word in you. You've got that inspiration. You've got that moment and you meditate that. You keep that in mind. You don't let that go. Because at the right time, the hedge will come down and you'll be released. And what you couldn't do, you'll be able to do. Uh, it's, it's the way it is. I wish there was a quicker way, but there isn't. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's a wait. It's a huge wait. You've got to learn how to wait. But the end result is what we're looking at here. The end result. Now, some of you are, are in your... I mean, I know... A lot of you guys, you're all older now. When we started, we were, I was in my 40s, you were in your 30s. <laughs> now I'm in my 70s, you're in your 60s, soon to be in my 80s, and you'll be just... <laughs> and you think, my God, when are we going to get this thing done? When are we going to get this thing finished? Don't worry, don't, don't, don't panic. If you have got a word from God, I don't care how many years ago it was. Remember, Abraham, 25 years, he waited. Moses, 40 years. Joseph in prison for 13 years. It seems like you get a word from God. You get that, you get that, oh my God, I've got the, uh, you know, the coat of many colors. I'm, 
I'm chosen of my father. I'm going to prosper and, and my brothers are going to love me. You find out, no, they hate you and they're going to throw you in prison. You know, and uh, that's just the way it is. But you can keep that. You can keep that word. See my lab labradoodle behind me. <laughs> no, he's getting in on the act. Uh, keep it. Don't let it go. And then at the right time, you'll see it begin to work. So there's not many things I've actually had revelation on or inspiration on. One, of course, was Victory Church in the old days, and we saw how God used that, but then that came to an end. But, you know, I, I believe in resurrection power. I believe you do too. Maybe we're going to see God resurrect Victory Church again. Maybe we're going to see a move of God again. But it's not up to me. I'm just going to step out my little steps. This is the Zoom is a little step, a little step with much aggravation. But who knows where it's going to go. But I've kept that. I've kept that. You know, uh, if God... Remember, any resurrection has got to be a death anyway. You've got to know that. You've got to, there's got to be a death. You can't have resurrection power unless there's a death. You know, Jesus was the seed that fell into the ground. It's not the money seed. It's, it's God's seed in the ground. And that seed was resurrected. And if he resurrected Christ, he's going to resurrect you. Uh, and so there's a resurrection time coming. But it could be resurrection of your dream, uh, resurrection of, of your ministry, resurrection of your family. There could be tons of resurrections. Um, but there's going to be the resurrection of your physical body. That, that will happen. So if you die during the coronavirus, don't worry, you will be resurrected. There is no death in Christ. Those that believe in the Lord Jesus shall never die. We have a, a, an amazing promise given to us when we receive Jesus. It's called eternal life. So, let's just encourage each and every one of us. Let's not go around with a, a long face. Yeah, okay, so isolate, etc. But a lot of these things are telling us I don't actually necessarily believe anyway. I think that we should be breathing oxygen. We should be out there exercising and eating good food. But um, besides that, um, we're going to come through. We're going to come through. And if you don't come through, you're still going to come through because God's in control of your life. And uh, He is coming soon. Now, here's one good thing. The rapture can't take place until the man of sin has been revealed. So once the man of sin has been revealed, then get ready. Christ is coming back. And if it gets worse than what it is now, you won't see it anyway because you're not called unto wrath. Right now, this is not the wrath of God. This is just the tribulations of this world because Babylon is falling. But when the wrath of God comes, you don't want to be around. So make sure that you tell people that this is not the uh, uh, the end game here at the moment. There's still more to come. But that man of sin will be revealed and and we'll all know it. You won't have to say, is this the Antichrist? That We'll all know what the Antichrist well, There's always been Antichrist anyway, but we'll know it. Then the end shall come. But this gospel also must be preached to the ends of the world before Christ comes back. And the gospel, of course, that I like to preach is the one that Paul preached. And, of course, he only preached Christ in him, Christ doing this through him, waiting on Christ Jesus. And uh, this is our, our message to the world. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. There's no other message, really. And if you're movements, your actions, your doings are based upon a word from Christ. Uh, you, you're in good shape. You're in good shape. Because it all points back to the to the cornerstone. You know, where you've got Paul the Apostle, it points back to him. You keep hit. He said, follow me as I follow Jesus. We follow Paul's doctrine. But that points back to the Apostle's doctrine. And we follow the apostles' doctrine. And of course, that points back to the chief cornerstone, the head, Jesus Christ's doctrine. You have not so the doctrine of Christ. Uh, if you have not the doctrine of Christ, Paul said, you do not have much going for you at all. In fact, you're cursed. So let's not be concerned about this doctrine, that doctrine, church doctrines, doctrines of the world, Babylonian. It's the doctrine of Christ. And I found that if I've got the... The, the spirit of the consciousness of Christ going in me constantly in memory. 
I'll come through any disaster, any situation. It's the answer to everything. So, Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus Christ in me, the hope of glory. Are we going to be discouraged because of what's going on? No, we know what's going on. Civil war. So now we know we can look to the result. Uh, was it day before yesterday? VE day. Praise God. Victory day. Victory Europe day. That, what, there, there was yesterday. So we've got Victory Church Day now. Victory. You know, the, uh, 75 years ago, I was three years of age. And I remember VE Day. I was there in Ilford, Essex, on uh, Eastern Avenue. We had a house. And my parents dressed me up in a Union Jack. And I remember at three, with this big party, eating these lovely cakes and things. I was there. My God, I was there. And now, 75 years later, we can't even celebrate it because of the coronavirus. But a lot of people did celebrate it in their hearts. Keep it in memory. Don't let it go. Victory Day. It's come. It's here. I think it's a sign. It's, it's here. It's, it's now. We're overcomers. We're coming through. We have rest promised us. We have victory. We're taking over. We're coming in to the control of, of what Babylonians had. We're taking it now. Well, that's my message. How it even came out, I've got no idea because I <laughs> was so distraught trying to do the Zoom. But we overcame, did we not? Did we overcome? We did. Anyway, you can unmute now and uh, I'm going to unmute everybody. Falling in love can bring no one can tell me that I'm too young to know I love you so And you love me Our day will come If we just wait a while No tears for us Think love and wear a smile Our dreams of music Because we'll always stay in love this way Our day will come Because we'll always stay in love 